Hello friends, welcome inside my inner sanctuary, which also happens to be my one and only living room. Some of you might recognize this bed over here on that desk over there in the corner. Well, and that's because I showed how I made these things in one of my earlier episodes. And guess what? You can find that in the video description. Well, you know that I have quite a lot of workshop space, but I sure don't have a lot of living space. And that's one hell of a reason to have some decoration, at least in that one room, where you can actually live. And I think that I just had some rather creative ideas to tackle that. So let's get right into it. Okay, so what I have here are a couple of simple picture frames that I want to use to put those pictures that we're going to make on the walls. But as you can see, all of these frames have in some form or another damages somewhere in the periphery. As you can see here over in that corner and in that corner uh, little pieces of glass have broken off and here we have a small uh, fracture inside the glass. And I also have another large picture frame here that has a rather large piece broken off here on the corner. And what I'm going to do is to save these uh, picture frames for our project. And just to say it, uh, normally you can pay quite some money for some picture frames, but I got these for free because they are damaged. But I actually don't want to put them on the walls as they are. What I will do is to take some pieces of wood, in this case just simple spruce, and I will cut them in pieces and then glue them on the glass so that they create a wooden frame around the glass. We will then use some wood stain to get them into a darker color. This uh, large picture frame here is actually too far gone for this solution to be used. So what we're going to do instead is the following. I will take this piece of glass here that I salvaged from a copy machine in the past and I will then throw away the old piece of glass and cut the wood into shape so that we can use this piece of glass here for a smaller but still usable picture frame. And cutting the wood can be done in many different ways. I'm improvising here a little bit using my hacksaw with a saw blade that is actually intended to be used for metal and plastics and not for wood but it has the advantage that it is very fine-toothed so at least the wood isn't damaged unnecessarily and I, but I will also try to use my jigsaw for this. So I have now cut out uh, these pieces of wood. We will do it so that the wood protrudes over the edges of the glass for about uh, 15 millimeters so that hopefully when we look on that picture hanging on the wall, the frame will cover the glass and we will not see that it is uh, constructed in such a cheap way. But before I will glue this on, let me use some ethanol here to remove fat and other dirt from the piece of glass. So the glue that I will use here is this stuff that you have seen in some of my earlier videos. It's called Celisto Hybrid, but this is just of course a brand name and there are lots of other products that you can use for this. But if you want to glue something, let's say on a blank metal surface or glass, as in this case, a MS polymer based adhesive in my experience is a good way to go. So if you're looking for a glue like this, Look for MS Polymer or Modified Selene. And I'm trying to only use a thin film here because the more you take, of course, the bigger the gap between the wood and the glass will be and also the time that it will take to harden or to dry will be much longer. And this is basically what I do all around the frame. Now we'll just leave that as it is in a warm place and wait for the adhesive to dry. So the adhesive has now been drying for about a day 
it's not completely hardened yet but I can already start to apply some wood stain to the wooden parts of the frame and we will then have that whole thing wait for another day or so in this rather dry and warm place here. And some of you might wonder about these metal clamps and if they don't need some space between the wood and the glass for these little hooks here to grab into and that's true but that is really not a problem because the layer of glue between the wood and the glass provides enough space for that and the modified silane is not a stiff but an elastic adhesive that means that even if there is no air space the hook can just cut into the MS polymer. Okay so we have the picture frames fixed but what are we going to put inside? Well just the other day I was on that uh, flea market over in Cologne and I bought this lot of books here it's uh, six books and I paid 12 bucks for that so are these books rare? Well somewhat. Are these books interesting? Yes. Are these books valuable? No they are not. I've been a collector of antique books for many years and uh, I can see if something is rare <laughs> and also can tell if something is more or less valuable. Now the book here on top is actually the most valuable of the books we have here. It's also the oldest one. It's about a hundred years old and it is a book called Los Handbuch der Dreherei which means the Turner's Manual by Los and it was um, by that time it had already been printed 120,000 times and at the time it would have been a popular manual for people who worked in wood turning as well as people who worked in machining and it has many many really great really detailed drawings of machining tools of the time many of them uh, from before the turn of the century German, American and English manufacturers alike it also describes a lot of uh, processes that are used in that art and of course I'm not going to do anything with this book but what I'm going to do is uh, to scan some of the pictures we can then print them out with the printers that I've been working on recently and try to use them as a part of a collage. Furthermore we have uh, science fiction books here from the 70s and 80s and among them we also have this American book here it's, it's called <laughs> Crack Up 101 ways to convert an airplane to scrap metal details inside and yeah it shows just that uh, pictures of broken airplanes from the 20th century some of them early 20th century to mid 20th century then we have this German magazine here called Galaxis Geschichten aus der Welt von Morgen which means stories from the world of tomorrow and what it has is basically an assortment of classic American most of them are American or it's sometimes it's a German versions of American and international science fiction novels it's the, the the cover pictures of them obviously and what I'm going to do with this as well as with these other books here maybe is to cut out some of the pictures and use them for a collage as well and um, well just to say it again I paid about two bucks for these and I also checked the internet so these are really not valuable there are lots of these around nobody wants to have them anymore and well I will really take a close look at these before I do anything to them but I'm quite sure that I will take some stuff out of these they're losing their structural integrity so to speak anyways the binding has uh, given up sort of and well let's just see what we can do with this so as I mentioned earlier I want to use this printer to print out some graphics for our collages and the problem is that and you can see that in one of my earlier episodes I uploaded that about two weeks ago and you can find that in the video description as well I tried to get some old printers running again and one of those printers was this one so did I get it running? well yes and no I can do black and white printouts and grayscale printers, printouts but yeah there was a problem with the ink cartridge it's just too old I guess 
And so I bought this remanufactured replacement uh, color ink cartridge. And let's just insert that into the printer and see if we have any luck with that. And yes, it worked! This is not perfect, but pretty close to what it's actually supposed to look like. And I guess the printing quality is good enough for, you know, helping me with those decorations that I want to make for my living room. And since this old printer is actually capable of printing on DIN A3 and not just on DIN A4, I'd say let's try that one out as well. Don't look too bad in my opinion. And in the meanwhile I have already cut out all the pictures from inside the books that I need for the collages. So we can start with the actual work. The printouts that I will be using here are scans from inside the Turner's manual, which I slightly adjusted and magnified for this project. Okay, so I'd say it's about time for a before and after comparison. And as you can see I've changed a couple of other things here as well. For example, I brought my sound system from the workshop over here. Also take a look at the bed. But then of course our pictures. And those improvised 
picture frames turned out quite well now, didn't they? I would say not that bad for a guy who spends most of his time in an electronics lab, right? So I guess maybe this can be a motivation for you to try something like this out yourself. I mean, there are basically no rules and as you saw, you don't need anything expensive to do this. But for those of you who are really not interested in this stuff and who are more technically minded, well, if everything works out fine, I will buy one of these tomorrow and there will be a lot of refurbishing that I will have to do and I guess the next video will be about that then.